everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me once again for Tea Time. Today, we have a little bit of Focus and Misty Morning combination because, you know, I love the bergamot and the zing of the peppermint and whatnot. So many great herbs in here. So good. So good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea or possibly a cup of coffee. Just hanging out, as we always do, talking tech, talking photo, talking video, whatever it is. So guys, before we get into it, it's going to be a canon day, but I want to ask that if you haven't went over to my website, jcristina.com, go over there to jcristina.com forward slash ebook. Once again, jcristina.com forward slash ebook. Go download my free ebook. Did you hear that? Free. 10 tips of making tax sharp images. Doesn't matter if you're a professional, a pro-am, or even an amateur. You're going to get something out of that ebook. So go download it. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash ebook. And if you have not cleaned your sensor as of yet on any of your cameras, why not? It's easy. It's safe. I put together a product called Aurora Camera Care. It allows you to clean your sensors safely, easily, in just minutes. And instead of sending them in for like a hundred bucks, it'll literally cost you like five dollars <laughs> to clean every one of your sensors. There's about five cleanings in a pack, so they're very, very reasonable, and you can do it once again very cheaply and safely. So go pick those up. Once again, Aurora Camera Care. You can find them over at B&H Photo on my website, jcristina.com, or you can go over to amazon.com and pick it up through Prime, either which way. Once again, Aurora Camera Care. So today we're gonna get into some Canon things because Canon's in the news with their brand new Q1 2021 financial results. Now we talk about all the different camera manufacturers as financial results come out and we read through what they give us in those reports and give that straight to you. And then we have a conversation about it. I think it's great because we get an idea of where the market is going. You know, is it positive? Is it negative? Where? What's going on? And we know like Nikon has had a lot of negativity, but as of late, they've been really positive. There's a lot of things going on in Nikon that's great. We see positivity over at Sony. We see positively, definitely over at Fujifilm. They're doing fantastic, all right? And now we're on to Canon to see what's going on over there with them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read some of these um, highlights, I guess, that are reported here in this article so that we get an idea and then we'll kind of discuss it as we go through it. So from the top, once again, this is Q1 for 2021. Now, it starts out by saying, as for imaging, still benefiting from the effects of new camera bodies, unit sales of both cameras and lenses exceeded our plan. That's interesting because I would think that in this period of time, we would have lower sales, not greater sales. But anyways, let's continue. Profitability improved significantly from last year due to a rise in average selling price and an increase in sales efficiency. So they're making more money. Number one, they're charging more. We know that for sure. And number two, they're becoming more efficient. And this efficiency that they're speaking about has to do with online processes. So kind of give you some backstory in that. The report continues. As for cameras, even amid continued restrictions on people's movement, demand for cameras remains solid, supported by the need for high quality visual expression. Based on this, we still expect the 2021 camera market to be up slightly or 5.8 million units. That is a positive statement there, positive statement. All right, a little fluff there at the beginning about high quality visual expression, eh, whatever, look over that. But the idea that they're looking at the market extending instead of contracting um, is very positive, very positive indeed. Let's continue. In the first quarter, revenue was significantly higher than last year, as sales remained strong, driven by the EOS R5 and the EOS R6, which were launched in the second half of last year. Absolutely, guys, the EOS R5 and the EOS R6 have made Canon a lot of money. We know that to be the case, and they're showing it or 
letting us know about it here in this report. Additionally, the synergy effect of having competitive camera bodies and expanding our lineup of RF lenses, which command high margins, led to an increase in average selling price. Once again, we're seeing those RF lenses as being a major pull, a major means of making more money. And we've talked about this in the past, lenses drive a manufacturer. If you have really good lenses, and you can sell them at a high price. It's the equivalent to, let's say, ink. You can sell a base camera, let's say, for a cheaper price if you know that the people that now bought that camera body are going to be buying your lenses. And by not allowing third party to come in and make lenses, as of yet, let's say not too many third parties, anyways, what happens is, is you then command the majority right, or the lion's share of the monies based on those people purchasing your lenses and not third party. So it's a smart business model and I think this is going to continue. This and the establishment of efficient online sales activities nurtured through COVID-19 is leading to an improvement in profitability. Once again, back to online sales. Online sales is what has been expanding their growth, number one. And of course, their margins are just simply higher and the prices that they are commanding on these things are higher. Okay, so there's improvements all the way around on why they're becoming more and more profitable even during this downturn. For the full year, reflecting the situation surrounding sales in the first quarter, we not only raised our projection for camera unit sales by 100,000 units to 2.9 million units, but also raised our projection for revenue. Once again, they're saying they're going to sell 100,000 more units, but they're going to also raise the price. So we're going to sell more and make more, right? This is where they're at. To further strengthen the mirrorless camera lineup, in April, we announced the development of a new model, the EOS R3, which is equipped with a backside illuminated stacked CMOS sensor that achieves high speed signal processing which allows for a number of functional improvements such as continuous shooting performance. Now, the EOS R3 is going to be one of their professional line cameras, like a 1D, but I think it's going to be like a baby 1D because I do still think that the Canon EOS R1 will be coming out, which will be a replacement to the 1D lineup. So the EOS R3 is going to be, I think, a big seller, especially for the professionals, but they're probably going to be selling for anywhere from $4,500 to $5,400. I'm just speculating. So they continue with this new product thought. At the same time, we announced three new RF lenses, bringing the total to 22, and we will continue to enhance this lineup going forward. Now, we've talked about this in the past, Canon went through this like breakneck period of time where they were just pushing out RF lenses like crazy. And in the last two years, we now see 22 lenses with a like 15 on the horizon that they're working on. It's a lot, they're going quick, but that's what Canon does. They try making or bringing people in through their lenses and it's not a bad idea. It's pretty smart because we know manufacturers are driven by lenses and also are photographers. If a photographer doesn't have a specific lens, they'll look to another manufacturer. Like if you are a, so let's say sports and wildlife guy and you need an 800 or maybe a 1200 millimeter lens, well, which camera manufacturer has it? That's probably which way you're going to go. Or if you need a proper tilt shift lens, which manufacturer actually has it? They're probably going to go in that direction. Canon knows that and that's why they're at this breakneck speed putting out lenses. And that's what they've been doing as of late for the last couple of years. They finalized by saying, additionally, the new types of cameras, such as the power shot that were launched at the end of last year and has attracted quite a bit of attention for its ease of capturing long range images with one hand, 
we are steadily creating new markets. And we talked about this in the past, right guys? This PowerShot Zoom and all of these oddities or oddball cameras that Canon were coming up with right? Something that looked like a little Pokemon thing. And then we have this power shot zoom that looks like a one-handed monocular type of, I don't know, telescope or something. Really weird stuff, but it's doing well for them, all right? These strange, let's say, cameras are doing really well with the consumer market, okay? It's a means for them to grab some money from the people that would normally not purchase a camera because they're let's say either too expensive or what they have in their pocket is simply good enough or perceived to be good enough. And when they take a look at some of those images in low light situations or other extreme situations, then it looks pixelated and like crap. Then they're like, yeah, maybe I need to purchase a proper camera. Well, these type of cameras fit that need. The soccer mom with this power shot zoom, it's a cool type of camera for doing stuff like that. All right. Um, so Canon has been working on, let's say, R&D of new type of market cameras, right? Once again, steadily creating new markets. And that's what they're trying to do here because they know that the standard or the classic consumer camera market is dead. They're still making cameras, but a lot of their competitors are no longer making consumer based cameras because there's not enough money in doing so, right? So this is what's going on with Canon right now. It looks very good. It looks like they're doing really well. I'm gonna bring up this chart real quick so you can see the breakdown, but in a chart form. And everything in here, I'm gonna leave it up on the screen for just a second. You could take a picture of it and go through it if you want, step by step, little by little. But this is what we're talking about and this is what the breakdown was um, according to what they released in the report. So, of course, we're going to get fluff because all the camera manufacturers or any manufacturer or any business is going to fluff things up. But I really do believe that Canon is doing quite well right now. And it all stems from the EOS R series. It's only been around for a couple of years, but they're making a lot of money. Why? They're optimizing, number one. And number two, they're commanding a premium. The price on this stuff is really expensive for what it is. It's the same damn cameras without an OVF and a mirror. I mean, we're not like changing everything, right? It's pretty much the same thing. They throw an EVF in it, get rid of a mirror, change some stuff on the inside a little bit, and it's about it. You know, you don't have this. It's still the camera that they had from before with modifications. So I think it's really smart what they're doing right now. Um, but what do you think? Do you think that these are good numbers? Do you think they're good numbers for Canon? Do you think that this is really good for the industry as a whole, seeing that things are coming up? instead of going down. I know some of the other manufacturers that we reported on their Q1 were really not that great, right? And also last year, last quarter of last year, were really abysmal for some of the manufacturers. Things are looking up, I think, right across the board. And that's really good for professional photographers like myself, because most likely things will get better and probably work is going to become more abundant, right? So let's hope that is the case. I wanna know, once again, what you think. In the comment area below this video, put your thoughts. Let's have this discussion. What do you think? And when we're done talking down here, go over to community.jchristina.com. That is our creative Discord server where we're talking all day long. Once again, photo, video, tech. There is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of photographers, videographers, and tech heads over there. No trolls. Um, go join, it's free. Once again, community.jchristina.com. Also, if you got anything out of this video at all, please throw it a big thumbs up. That will be helpful. Subscribe to the channel and click the little bell icon right over here if you are already subscribed. When you click that bell icon, whenever I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And, and, 
Head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That would be awesome. And if you'd like to directly support the channel, you can click the little join button right down here. Become a member of the channel. I can give you perks. You can contribute a dollar, two dollars a month, whatever you desire. That would also be helpful. Once again, download that ebook over at jchristina.com forward slash ebook, 10 tips at making tax sharp images and for getting to the end of this video. Use promo code YT20 over at my website, jchristina.com and you're gonna get 20% off everything in your shopping cart. Not one thing, everything. Once again, promo code YT20 at checkout. That's it guys, I'm out of here for yet another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe and stay healthy.